How are you doing, life? What's up? Can we please fix the rules? What, what rules? What rules? <laughs> Tell us what rules. Do you want to change the, the disc? Look, hey, check the, the disc. Rules. What would your rule be? Give me your dream rule. You are the chairman of Smash. What's the rule called? Oh, just like. We basically look at the campiest games of uh -huh. like most of most platform camping. We own another. We world check world. the airtime limit. <laughs> you implement an airtime limit. Air yes. Would an airtime limit have saved Leffen at Ludwig's Invitational? That's what I'm going to try to answer today. First off, what is an airtime limit? Well, some players believe that to stop characters <coughs> from camping in the air by abusing their multiple jumps. We need a limit that a player should lose if they have spent too long in the air. This is similar to a ledge grab limit as it is detailed at the end of game screen. However, the air time on the results screen includes time on ledge and time on the angel platform. So what would that air time limit be in the end? And would it have saved Leffen? Well, we're going to need to work that out. And here's how we're going to do it. Quick disclaimer, I really don't think I'm good enough to have an opinion on whether an air time limit is good for the game. So this is purely for science and my own amusement, and for you to draw your own conclusions. I don't have an issue of how Hungrybox plays the game at all. Uh, with that out of the way... First off, we're going to have a look at a set where people feel an air time limit would have made the game a lot more fair. In a matchup where a lot of people just write it off because of Puff's ability to do this. Icy's Jigglypuff. And of course, I'm going to get my first set of data from the infamous Chudat vs Hungrybox at Dreamhack Austin 2017. Specifically, Game 5. This is a game where Hbox times out Choose Ices using Puff's multiple jumps to jump from platform to platform, dodging interacting with the Ice Climbers at all. In this 8 minute game, which I watched on 0.2.5 speed by the way, counting the seconds every time Hgod left the ground in order to calculate his airtime, he was in the air for 352 seconds, or 5 minutes and 52 seconds. Give or take a few due to me counting with my eyes and that, but that's probably the extreme end of the spectrum. A limit would be to discourage this type of play and to therefore stop the game from going to timeout due to this strategy. So now let's look at a quote unquote normal ICs game, as we wouldn't want to punish Puff players for just simply playing the damn game. So let's look at Hbox vs Slug at the same tournament, the Lud Invitational, in losers finals game 1 on Yoshi's. I think this is a good fit, as Hungrybox does implement the platform to platform strategy, but the game still goes to last stock and is only 4 minutes long. And based on their other games, this seems like a good judgement point for the game and allows Hungrybox to play how he wants, without abusing the Ice Climbers in an egregious degree. Hbox's airtime for this game was 158 seconds, or 2 minutes and 38 seconds, just under half the Chew game. So reasonably a limit to discouraging camping would be somewhere in the middle of this, at around 4 minutes. However, we need to make sure that this number isn't in danger of causing a player to lose a game just by playing normally. So we need to look at other floaty characters that spend a lot of time in the air doing things like recovering. For example, Samus and Peach. So to save myself the pain of counting more air time at 0.25 speed, I looked up some slippy archive games from tournaments like Shine 2022 of random floaty matchups from more Puff to Peach to Samus. This was all thanks to a kind stranger answering my cries for help once I realised that there was no way to view airtime in raw slippy files. They crafted a code that would let me view them seamlessly, so thank you very much to them and give them a follow for helping me out. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. We're halfway to 1k and it would be so so cool to hit that before the end of the year. So after using slippy.gg to search through tournament games, I was able to find multiple cases of a character like Samus playing completely normally but still spending over 4 minutes in the air, just on recovery on a stage like Dreamland. Though it would only ever inch over by a few seconds, if this were to punish a player in tournament like this even once, that would be way too much. This leads me to say that the most appropriate time for an airtime limit should probably lean towards the more extreme cases of Hbox vs Chew, at around 5 minutes to 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So for example's sake, we're going to say that the reasonable airtime limit will be 5 minutes of airtime. If you're hitting this number, you've probably been what some might say, excessively abusing the ledge or air camping. So now, the big question. With this airtime limit, would Leffen's game versus Hbox have gone any differently? 
would he not have got off the stage and immediately started talking about how we need something to save him? Well, let's count the game on FD and see. Couple kicks in the face and a grab. Yeah. Oh, scary. Oh, wait. Again. Oh. Whoa. Okay. All right. Was holding <laughs> in for the pound. Oh, oh, wait. The game doesn't even actually go on for five minutes. In fact, even at four minutes, it still doesn't even hit that limit. So, out of curiosity, I counted up Hbox's airtime in game four, and it came out to two minutes and three seconds. So, yeah. Nowhere close to even the lower end of our limit. So that's a resounding no on would an airtime limit have saved Leffen. However, maybe if there was an airtime limit in place, Leffen would have approached less and goaded Hbox into approaching more. But in the end, we could go on forever in theories of would it have made a difference or not. We won't ever truly know if an airtime limit would have made the difference in that FD game. Does this mean that we shouldn't have an airtime limit? Well, who am I to say? Maybe the correct approach is a percent based approach where the limit is based on how long the game went on for. However, I did learn that implementing an airtime limit should be treated very cautiously as to not have unintended collateral if it ever was to be implemented. Also, I want to note that as soon as Hbox stopped his FD game plan, Leffen killed him twice at 66% off a grab. So I'm not sure what Leffen really wants here. If that amount of camping was too egregious, and does he just want Hbox to hold forward against a character like Fox and just lose? But I'm certainly not good enough to have an opinion on what's good at top level. I hope this video can help you draw your own conclusions and your feelings around an airtime limit and whether you think we really do need one. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you very much for watching.